much, Madam Vice President. And now just a brief word about President Biden. <laughs> no one has ever brought as much foreign policy expertise and experience to the presidency as Joe Biden. For the two decades or so that I've worked for him, I've just been trying to keep up. Uh, from Baghdad to Bagram, from Paris to Pretoria, to so many points in between. It's been one of the great privileges and pleasures of my life uh, to watch President Biden in action across the globe. And I know from seeing him in action that he believes profoundly in leading with diplomacy, mobilizing our friends and allies to work together in common cause. As important, he welcomes new ideas, dissenting views, rigorous debate. He wants to ensure that our foreign policy stays innovative and creative, so it doesn't just respond to global events, it actually helps to shape them. Those are the instructions that I have from him. Uh, that is what we are going to try to do here at the State Department. And President Biden and Vice President Harris have made it clear that in everything we do, the first question we have to ask ourselves is this, how is it going to benefit our fellow Americans? How will this policy, how will this initiative, how will this outreach answer their needs, their values? How will it make their lives just a little bit better? That's the first question we have to ask. And we're gonna hold ourselves to that standard every step of the way. We're lucky to have this president and this vice president at the helm during such a pivotal time for our nation and for the world. And so it's very much my honor today to introduce to you the President of the United States. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Thank you uh, for welcoming the Vice President and me uh, back to the State Department. It's true, the Secretary and I have worked together a long time. And I, I, know, uh, I know that he has the background and the capacity needed to, uh, quite frankly, uh, lead the State Department at a critical moment. This has been a difficult few years. I've been hanging around uh, as the Foreign Relations Committee and as Chairman and then as Vice President and now as President uh, for a long time dealing with State. Those of you who work here, including the new class of uh, diplomats that, we, that are on, uh, on the screen behind me, um, you're among the brightest, most involved, best educated group of people America has to offer. And, uh, but I come today uh, to talk uh, to everyone at uh, Main State, watching remotely and, uh, and those who will not be able to see this but will hear about it. You know, uh, an incredible group of diplomats uh, that I've had a chance to work with, and what we never talk about is you not only have great intellectual capacity, you have great personal courage. I've been with some of you when we've been shot at, with some of you in places that you would have not have any idea you'd want to be when you were going to school of foreign policy and uh, foreign service. They never told you what well, that was going to happen. But you're an incredible group of individuals. And I've said many times over the years, uh, those of you who are stationed uh, um, overseas and have been stationed overseas, you're America's face. You're what people see in the country you are. They look at you, you are the face of America. And it matters, it matters a great deal how you comport yourself and how you deal with the folks that you're dealing with in that particular country. I find it, um, uh, many of you among uh, the most uh, incredible, and by the way, I think what we don't do enough, we don't thank your families. We don't thank your families for the sacrifices they make they make sacrifice, real sacrifices. I don't know how many times uh, I have moved, uh, I mean, again, uh, 
move to see to it that uh, your spouses, they give up their careers uh, many times and follow you. Many times their careers are as consequential or more consequential than yours, but they do it for the country. And uh, they're to be thanked. But the main message that I want to communicate to you all is that uh, whether you're part of the newest class of Foreign Service officers, you've worked for decades in the Civil Service or Foreign Service, or your locally employed staff, your vital and success, the strength of our nation depends in no small part on you. Later today, I'm going to go up on the eighth floor and send a clear message uh, to the world. America is back. America is back. Diplomacy is back. You are the center of all that I intend to do. You are the heart of it. We're going to rebuild our alliances. We're going to re-engage the world and take on the enormous challenges we face, dealing with the pandemic, dealing with global warming, and again, standing up for democracy and human rights around the world. Again, as I said, you're the face of America abroad. And in our administration, you're going to be trusted and you're going to be empowered. Trusted and empowered to do your job. But I ask each of you to abide by a few core tenets. Integrity in all you do. Let me say it again. Integrity in all you do. Transparency and accountability to rebuild trust in America around the world. Working in the service of the American people, not self-interest, and promoting diversity, equity, inclusion, accessibility across the board, because our diplomats at all levels should reflect the full diversity of this great country. I know how much we ask of you and your families, and I mean that. I do know. It's been a long time we've been dealing with this building and all of your predecessors. The sacrifices you make are real and not recognized much by the country as a whole. They don't know all that you do. I also know that you've never let us down. I believe in you. I believe in you. We need you badly. Trust you, and I'm going to have your back that I promise you, just like you're going to have the backs of the American people. What I always point out to people in the years when I was chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, I'd make sure that my Foreign Relations Committee staff came to my home state and worked in constituent services which many of them thought was sort of beneath them. I'm a foreign policy specialist. But it's all about who you work for, who I work for, who we work for. And the foreign policy is about promoting the interest of the people of the United States when a rubric and a set of principles that treat everyone with decency. So I promise you I'm going to have your back. I promise you, and I expect you to have the back of the American people. Now, I've got a, work, a lot of work to do, a lot of catching up to do, a lot of rebuilding to do, and I can't think of any group of people better capable of doing it more ready than all of you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I look forward to working with you. I look forward to seeing you, and I look forward to coming back when this auditorium is filled and no one has to wait down the podium. <laughs> so again, folks, thank you. You are the heart and soul of who we are as a country, and the rest of the world is looking to you to help them understand us and so we can help them as well. So thank you all very much, and may God bless you, and may God keep you all safe when you're abroad. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated until the departure of the official party.